mornings start here. WKYT This Morning. Now at 6 on WKYT this morning, Interstate 75 at the Kentucky State Line is shut down this morning and will stay shut down for a few weeks. How that's impacting traffic ahead. And a Kentucky man spent 15 years in jail for a crime he didn't commit. Now he's hoping new legislation will help keep that from happening to anyone else. And Estill County leaders say they have a plan for testing radiation levels after radioactivity waste was found in a county landfill. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Sean Moody. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday. And it sounds like a nice Saturday. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to what may be a little spring weather, Mike Linden. That's right, Michelle. We are tracking what looks to be some sunny weather, mild temperatures, and even a little warm as we get into our Sunday. But right now, of course, as we start out here early in the morning, Right after 6 o'clock, things are a little chilly. Most temperatures close to, if not below, freezing in the mid to low 30s. So don't go packing away those winter clothes just yet. You'll certainly need your jacket for the early morning hours, 30 degrees in Lexington. Now we look at Defender this morning, sweeping the skies, not finding any active weather, but we are finding some very thin clouds and even some fog popping up over central and eastern Kentucky this morning. So visibility is down just slightly in a few spots. If you're heading southward on I-75, you'll run into some of the thicker fog. There in Pulaski County and even in Boyle and Mercer counties this morning around two, three miles. That isn't going to be incredibly dense, but certainly something that you'll notice if you're hitting the roadways this morning. Now, despite the month of February still being in the winter season, it's going to feel really nice out there through the course of the weekend. I'll be back in about 10 minutes and break down what looks to be an early preview of the spring season here in the late winter. All right, Mike, thank you. We are following a story out of Tennessee this morning that could have a major impact on anybody traveling south on Interstate 75. Yeah, police and highway crews have shut down I-75 just south of the Kentucky state line. WKYT's Mike Byer is at the live desk covering our top story this morning. Yeah, guys, this problem could be hanging around for a while. Let's take a look at where this is. Police say a rock slide closed the northbound lanes yesterday afternoon near exit 141 in Campbell County, Tennessee. That's between Jellico and La Follette. Police also closed the southbound lanes in the same area as a precaution. Right now, the Tennessee Department of Transportation says they have no timetable for when the southbound lanes will reopen. Until then, southbound traffic must exit at Jellico, then follow US 25 West or another route down to exit 141. Highway leaders say it could take two or three weeks to clean up the rock slide in the northbound lanes. Now, to recap, all lanes are currently shut down and will at least be closed through the weekend because Tennessee Highway officials say it will be Monday before they can even assess what should be done next. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you. We'll take a look at live drive traffic down near the state line right now. It's still, of course, fairly early in the morning. Things look like they're moving smoothly, but remember that southbound traffic must exit at Jellico, then follow US 25W or another route down to exit 141. Yeah, and you can keep up with traffic and the latest forecast on your Weather Plus traffic app. You can download it for free on the app or Google Play Store. So imagine spending 15 years in prison for a crime you did not commit. For one Kentucky man, that is exactly what happened. Yeah, now proposed legislation may be the key to keeping the same thing from happening to others. New this morning, WKYT Sabira Rayford looks at the push to end wrongful convictions. Well, it, it, a normal person's brain probably does this. My brain does this. It's never stopping. 14 years, 10 months, and 20 days. It's time Carrie Porter says he'll never get back. There's no closures, the answers. I can't get to the answer as to why I was made to do 15 years for a murder. They knew a reason should have known I didn't do. In 1998, Porter was convicted of murdering a man and sentenced to spend the next 60 years of his life in prison. And I told him I didn't do it. I heard about it on the street, and this is all I know about it. But Porter's plea of innocence wasn't enough. The police had an eyewitness that identified Porter in the lineup. He spent nearly 15 years in prison before DNA evidence exonerated him. So when I hear of things like Mr. Porter, you know, that's what uh, encourages me to continue to, to move forward. 
Kentucky Representative Johnny Bell has proposed a new bill that would impose stricter laws on the use of eyewitness identification. We've all heard about different things that take place in these lineup situations, such as um, maybe putting a thumb over someone that, that, that needs to be picked. House Bill 387 would focus on having a police officer that is unfamiliar with the case conduct the lineup to prevent possible coercion. Once you take a substantial portion of a person's life, you can't give that back. You can compensate them in, in monetary ways, um, but what would a person take for a year of their life, 10 years of their life? I mean, for me personally, there is no amount of money that I would trade for my time, my freedom. So, you asked me what it was like. While it was hell on this end over here, dealing with the fact that I'm not supposed to be here, my only satisfaction was one day I had a little light that shined through that dark cave was that, man, one day I'm going to make these people eat their words, and that was my drive. Sabir Rayford, WKYT. House Bill 387 right now is in the Judiciary Committee. Representative Bell told us he thinks the bill will make it through the House and he hopes it can pass through the Senate. People in Estill County are determined to find answers. And you would be too if you found out radioactive waste was dumped illegally into your community. Now, Estill County leaders are launching their own investigation. They want to know how the landfill got that material and who's responsible. But first, they want to make sure it's safe, especially with two schools right across the road. We're making every effort to make sure that our schools uh, are safe for our kids to attend uh, and, our, and for our staff uh, that are there uh, as well. The county's judge executive says it'll cost around $10,000 for the landfill and the schools to be tested for radiation tomorrow. He says they'll make the landfill pay for it. A man is in jail this morning after Lexington police say he attacked a Good Samaritan who tried to help him. Police say a woman was driving down Richmond Road near New Circle when she saw a man on the side of the road grab his chest and fall to the ground. She pulled over to help, but police say the man started attacking her. Someone else driving by called 911. Police say they think the man was on drugs. He's been charged with resisting arrest and public intoxication. They said that woman was not seriously injured. Police said she didn't want to press charges because she thought the man was mentally ill. A cornerstone of agricultural business here in Lexington will stay in Fayette County. Mayor Jim Gray announced yesterday that the Bluegrass Stockyards will rebuild on Ironworks Pike near Interstate 75, across from the Kentucky Horse Park. The business it was destroyed in a massive three-alarm fire last month on Lyle Industrial Avenue, and the new facility will be paid for with incentives from the state. Construction crews will start working in the summer. In Clark County, the community is mourning the loss of an 11-year-old who died from a massive heart attack earlier this week. The Clark County coroner said he had never seen a case like fifth grade, grader Whitney Jackson's. He says Whitney had a genetic disease that caused the massive heart attack. Now students at Baker Intermediate School are honoring their classmate by helping her family lay it to rest. We are well over $1,000. People were sending in, you know, quarters, dimes, nickels. Tens, twenties, hundreds. I mean, it's been an out, you know, an outpouring of, of just comfort and, and support. The money raised at the school will help with Whitney's funeral and burial costs. A GoFundMe page set up for the family has already raised more than six thousand dollars in two days. Librarians are in the process of moving from the Eagle Creek branch of the Lexington Library to a new facility. The new branch will have twice as much floor space, more meeting rooms, and a drive through book drop. The assistant manager at the Eagle Creek branch says the Hamburg area population has exploded in recent years, forcing this branch to expand. The Hamburg area has been growing for years and years, and the library's 15-year um, plan had always meant for there to be a new branch in this area to serve the, the huge explosion in population. Um, and finally, finally, we've gotten um, a building for that area. The new library is just down the road from Eagle Creek on Palumbo Drive. The new branch will open on March 15th. In Bowling Green, the National Corvette Museum wants to add something new for its visitors. The museum is planning a car preservation section to show visitors how Corvettes are cared for as they get older. The museum will have to renovate, and they hope to raise $100,000 for the exhibit. 
Your time now is 6.09 and WKYT This Morning is just getting started. And when we come back in some neighborhoods, kind of like mine, drivers are speeding through the streets to save a few minutes on the commute. We'll take a closer look at how people are trying to stop this habit coming up on WKYT This Morning. And if you're single and support Senator Bernie Sanders for the president, this new dating site might be for you. That story coming up after weather. A pretty good look this morning on Defender, but it looks like it may get even better as we head into Sunday. Coming up, I'll break down the weekend ahead and show you whether or not it's good to go outside. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Mike Linden. Good morning and welcome to the weekend. Not many days left in February now, and it's officially still the winter season, although it will not feel like it whatsoever over the course of the weekend. Maybe a little bit so this morning. Temperatures are below freezing in quite a few spots. Boyle County, Fayette County, 30 degrees. Franklin County and State Capitol, 29 degrees. We head farther out west. Fort Knox at 24. That's one of the coldest spots out there this morning. We look at Defender and we are seeing a very thin layer of cloud cover that will soon leave us. In fact, the radar picking up on some low-hanging fog as well. Nothing that's really going to impact the day all so much. We really are looking at temperatures getting to be quite nice as we head into the afternoon. Afternoon, most spots getting back into the lower 50s for our daytime highs out there. As southwesterly wind returns to the Commonwealth, of course, that's the source of the warm, moist air. And it looks like we will get in on some of that moisture, that being rain, but that will be at the beginning of the work week. Through the weekend, we'll get in on all the best that the Gulf of Mexico has to offer. Mild air works its way northward. It isn't until the start of the work week that that cold front toward the northwest begins to bring us some problems. Now, this is the only thing you'll really find out there this weekend that will get in the way of things being an otherwise perfect weekend. Some gusty winds picking up into the teens by this afternoon and getting stronger as our weekend goes on. In fact, by tomorrow morning, you'll be looking at winds stronger than what we'll see almost all day today. We head into Sunday afternoon as well. Those winds get above 35 miles per hour and close in on about 45 in a few spots as we head into Sunday evening. That's because of that low heading to the north of us. We're kind of on the tail end of things as that cold front arrives. Now you'll see what that cold front will bring other than the winds. So we'll work our way through the day today again beautiful lower 50 some spots in the upper 40s but nonetheless a beautiful mix of sun and clouds a great day we move into sunday that's when things do get a little gusty remember and we are looking at the active weather returning as we head into sunday evening that's when that cold front slides its way into the bluegrass bringing with it rain showers as we kick off Monday morning. The good news, though, look at those temperatures even as early as Monday, very early in the morning, around 1 a.m. But as we work our way into Monday afternoon, we take a bit of a step back thanks to the cold air returning to the region. So things do get a little messy to end the month, but nonetheless, things are great as we get ready to close out the final weekend of the month. Lower 50s today, mid to low 60s tomorrow, mostly sunny, a great looking weekend. A little breezy, but it looks like you'll certainly be able to get outside and enjoy it, especially if you can deal with a little breeze into tomorrow. Thank you, Mike. Looks like an enjoyable forecast. Yeah, you're ready to get out there for sure. Well, if you like Senator Bernie Sanders and you're single, this next story, well, might be right up your uh -oh, alley. Oh, <laughs> let's hear this. An Arizona State University student has capitalized on the popularity of Sanders to help bring singles together. An ASU sophomore started BernieSingles.com last week as a joke. But then the internet got a hold of it, and the site's gone viral. The site got nearly one million hits on its first day. And the guy who created it says he's heard from some members who've made a connection, all thanks to Bernie. He's going to have to start charging a membership or something, make some money off that thing. Well, you know what? It's good these people have the same political views. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's important. Maybe less fighting on that first day. Very, very well said. <laughs> 616 now on your Saturday morning, and when WKYT this morning returns. Homeowners in some neighborhoods are tired of people speeding through their streets, using them as cut throughs. Now they're asking police for help. That story coming up in about three minutes. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $266 million. Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $135 million. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. It is 619 on your Saturday. Now, they're popular with drivers who are trying to save a few minutes, but a lot of people who live along those neighborhood cut-throughs here in town say that comes at a cost for them. Yeah, they say drivers are speeding on these streets, and they're asking police and city leaders for help. Miranda Combs has a WKYT investigation. Motion. Make the motion that we accept this. It, it doesn't cut off the 
debate or no, anything. Sure. Yeah, it does. In a place of motions and seconds. Well, now this is your motion to to pass it. That's what that's what we're voting on. But chair, they can I ask would, those I, questions. I would encourage the council member to, to the proceed. I agree. If you'd like to proceed, a minimum of eight votes from the council is. Paper, scissors, and rock. You're done. Of questions and answers. I still have concerns about the whole petition process. Now, if it changed, I'd like to know when it changed. There was one topic on this Tuesday that put the brakes on change, at least for now. Their recommendation comes to us. Let's pass it or not pass it. Then let's amend it or make motions to correct it. A perfect example of the reason for the disagreement indoors is what's going on right here. This is Highcrest Drive. The speed limit is 25. Driveways give way to homes every few feet. It's near a Lexington Elementary School. This is one of the roads Lexington traffic engineering officials say they get a lot of calls about, and it didn't take long to see why. Cars going 30, 35, 36. So we've been here for 30 minutes, and in that time, we've seen 31 cars pass by us. Not a single one was going the speed limit. It's a huge problem, and the perception of the public is that it's a huge problem. Sergeant Ron Keaton says neighborhood cut-throughs are on their radar. Travel to the North Limestone Corridor, where many, like Drew Shackelford, prefer a bike over a car. About a month ago, while cycling during rush hour... She hit me with her car. Uh, I got knocked off of my bike. She was okay and went on home. Her home sits on a cut through street for many drivers just off North Limestone. Last summer, neighborhood kids painted these signs. She says it helped for a while, but not much anymore. People that use it as a cut through, as opposed to people who live on the street, tend to go very fast down the road and it's very dangerous. She says her neighbors are working on approaching the neighborhood traffic management program. Members of the council have other commentary on this issue. Which brings us back here. The traffic engineering, the police, the council person all see that this is a dangerous situation. That program is the one being discussed, where neighbors can call and voice concerns about speeders in their neighborhood and even petition for changes to the streetscape if needed. It has been in existence for some time in the city, but it's getting some upgrades that need council approval, since the problem of neighborhood cut-throughs is one that isn't going away. I'm looking for a second or we're moving on? Second. If you go to neighborhood meetings, uh, speeding and traffic seems to be the huge, uh, the number one complaint of most of them. In 2014, cut-through routes with the most speeding complaints were Clays Mill Road, Beaumont Center, Arrowhead, and in 2015, it was Valley Road, Polo Club, and Blairmore. As the city grows, more streets are going to be more compliance. Is that everybody? We all in? 4-4 four, four tie fails, so we're going to keep it in committee. All right, there's still more to come this morning. Yeah, sports is next. Kentucky heads into Nashville later this afternoon for a key SEC matchup with Vandy. Only three games left in the regular season, and the Cats lead the league by one game over South Carolina and Texas A&M. Now, back in January, Kentucky won easily over Vandy in Rupp 76-57, but as we know, Memorial Gym is always a tough place to play, and John Calipari expecting many games from here on out to go right down to the wire. I would say this year, in the end, there's going to be plenty of games where it's the last play and the tough team made it and won. And that's in the finish of the season, that's in conference tournament play, and that'll be in the NCAA tournament. You watch. The tough team just made a play and the other guy has his excuse and couldn't get there. I tried. It is Kentucky and Vanderbilt in Nashville's Memorial Gym, 4 o'clock right here on WKYT. And then after that, immediately following, it is Wildcat wrap-up. All of the highlights, post-game reaction, Lee K. Howard, Rob Bromley, and a host of others. Who knows? Right here on your home for the Cats, WKYT. Final regular season game of the year on Sunday for the U.K. women when they travel to College Station to play Texas A&M. The Wildcats must win to have any hopes of securing the last bye spot in next week's SEC tournament. Matthew Mitchell said his team is, t is taking better care of the ball and making better decisions. We're just doing a much better job of staying poised and not panicking and... Uh, that's just from 
from hard practice and tough uh, kids in the gym working and paying attention in film sessions and trying to improve. And that is a look at sports. Enjoy the game today and enjoy your weekend.